Good morning. Today is the fourth. Yes. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Some who walked and talked with Christ failed to find their salvation in him. Yet others, even before he was born, received him as their redeemer. Those who follow Jesus by faith and righteousness are endowed with power to become the sons and daughters of Christ by adoption into his family through the covenant of baptism and a lifetime of hearts being changed through faith on his name. We are given power through the atonement to become his children. We receive the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, enter into the sacred ordinances and covenants of the temple, and faithfully walk in gospel path. Walk the gospel path. Imbued with the Spirit, we become joint heirs with Christ and receive with him a glorious exaltation in the kingdom of our Father. Okay, so today is Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. And uh, just a little um, way of introduction to Luke. You remember, he is um, the, the ox. The, um, he portrays Christ as the savior of all people this this working beast of burden um, and it is written to the Gentiles to invite them in and he focuses on what Jesus felt um, Luke was the traveling companion of Paul so he he had eyewitness accounts from Paul um, his gospel focuses on inclusion so it focuses on women the poor, sinners, Samaritans, um, the presence of salvation through words and actions of Jesus. Uh, the theme, he has like reversals. Of, his theme is kind of reversal of fortunes. So poor to rich, rich to poor, sinner to saint, saint to sinner, that sort of thing. Um, you'll see a greater emphasis on prayer, praise, joy, and celebration. And then also in his, his uh, gospel, you'll see an extended account of the post-resurrection Christ. Um, so, in verses 1 through 20, which is where we're at. Um, that's Matthew. We're not in Matthew. We're in Luke. We're over here. Okay. So, um, his account starts not with um, a genealogical history. It begins with Zechariah and Elizabeth. So the parents of John the Baptist. It starts there. Um, how do I want to? Okay, so Zechariah is a priest. Elizabeth is a descendant of Aaron. Um, so they're kind of, how did Halverson describe it? That, that they, that if Jesus was born to be king, as in literal king of Israel through David, then John was born to be a high priest. That's how he described it. So it's Zechariah's turn to serve in the temple, uh, <clears throat> the tabernacle of the Lord, um, he described it as, so there's a lot that falls and there's a once in a lifetime opportunity to light the incense in the temple, literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. And this fell to Zacharias. Um, they're in, they're up there in their age. They're stricken with years is what it says. And she's barren. They haven't had a child. They've prayed for it for years. Then when he's in the temple or the tabernacle, he 
He's lighting the incense and an angel of the Lord comes to him. Um, uh, a point here in verse 13. So uh, in verse 12, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Um, something that was interesting that I liked that Halverson pointed out was that the first thing the angel always says when he appears is fear not. When he, came, when he comes to the shepherds, he says fear not. Um, when he comes, I think, to Elizabeth, we'll get, no, to Mary. We'll see here in a minute, probably tomorrow. If he also says that I haven't read ahead, so I don't know. Um, but an angel's job, first and foremost, is to banish fear, to cast it aside. Um, anyway, Zachariah says, how can that be? We're old. She's barren. And the angel says, uh, he says, how will I know this is going to be? And the angel says, I'm an angel of the Lord. That's how. <laughs> He's kind of like, seriously? And then, of course... Zechariah is struck dumb because he does not believe. Um, he's not able to speak until the, the child is born. But one verse that I really liked, or a passage in one of the verses, is verse 17, where he's talking about John the Baptist. And he says, And he shall go before him, meaning John shall go before Christ, in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And the part I like is the last, the last sentence to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That reminds me of what president Nelson said in conference in October. Um, he pled with us to become a people prepared to meet Christ at his second coming and um, hit me, <laughs> kind of like, okay, he he wants this this time to be now, and he wants us to be this people. So how do we do that? And and John here is uh, is called to make ready a people prepared for for Christ to come and teach them. So that's his his call, his duty. Um, so that's kind of. What I got from these verses. Let's see what Ludlow has to say. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Okay, so in verse 3, he, well, in verses 1 through 4, Luke is prefacing his writing and he says Theophilus um, Halverson says that that means lover of God so it could be a person he broke down the word what it means in Greek I believe and it means lover of God so it could be a specific person or it could be anybody who loves God which was nice um, let's see stricken in years in the Joseph Smith translation, we're talking about verse 8 here, course is changed to priesthood. Though many of the Jews in the meridian of time were in a state of direful and awful apostasy, such darkness of mind and spirit was not universal. It did not envelop the whole nation. Elizabeth and Zacharias were righteous saints. Both were lineal descendants of Aaron, and Zacharias held the office of priest in the Aaronic priesthood. This lesser priesthood had continued in direct descent without a break in the line from Aaron to Zacharias and his son, John the Baptist. Okay, and then we'll talk about verses 17 and 18, and then that'll be it for today. Um, so 17, this verse could have been translated. Also, he will go, for, go before him with Elijah's spirit and power to turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient ones to the practical wisdom of righteous ones to get ready for Jehovah, a prepared people. 
Okay, so if you're talking about the spirit of Elijah and preparing the people for the coming of the Lord, clearly they're talking about family history work. Um, to get ready for Jehovah, a prepared people. I don't know, this, this phrase here, it, it really makes me think, am I prepared for the Lord? Am I a prepared people? Is my heart prepared? Is my mind, is my mind ready? Um, okay, so 18. Whereby shall I know this has also been translated, how shall I know if this is so? And how can I be sure of this? The last words Zacharias had uttered prior to the infliction of dumbness were words of doubt and unbelief, words in which he had called for a sign as proof of authority of one who came from the presence of the Almighty. The words with which he broke his long silence were words of praise unto God, in whom he had all assurance, words that were as a sign to all who heard, and the fame whereof spread throughout the region. Um, I can understand the doubt of Zacharias. I can understand him being aged in years and being like, um, how? How is my wife going to bear a son? You know, but then, I don't know. You always read the scriptures and you're like, how could they, how could they doubt the angels before them? But then you're like, yeah, somebody came to me and was like, yeah, Haley, you're going to, you're going to conceive. I'm like, sure I am. Yeah. It's like, Haley, you're going to make the man of your dreams and get married in a, in a month. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Cause that's going to happen. Anyways. All right. That's all I've got for today. That was Luke chapter one, verses one through 20. And tomorrow we do verses 21 through 40. And I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. Today is the fourth. Uh, this is from the service book and ordinal of the Presbyterian Church of South Africa adapted. Almighty God, who art beyond the reach of our highest thought, and yet within the heart of the lowliest, come to us, we pray thee, in all the beauty of light in all the tenderness of love, in all the liberty of truth, mercifully help us to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thee. Sanctify all our desires and purposes, and upon each of us let thy blessing rest through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.